honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the Paladino Live Network. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on all of your favorite podcasting apps, but featuring Spotify. So if you could download and listen to the show on Spotify, it helps. If not, if you prefer a different app, it, it is what it is, but Spotify will help the show one way or another, no doubt about it. So really appreciate those of you that have been doing that. Uh, thanks for downloading and listening to this show on Spotify. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to be back on board with you once again today. The sun is trying to poke through these clouds a bit today. It's starting to poke through and it's blasting my eyes right now. But uh, is that the Timberwolves' hopes going into Game 3? I don't know, maybe. Because, well, the Timberwolves did beat, since the last episode anyway, we did beat Oklahoma City Thunder pretty easily. That seems like, you know, like five, like like, like a month ago or something. Because since then, the Timberwolves have dropped two to Denver. One putrid, horrific game. And one that was putrid and horrific in the first half. The Wolves came storming back. And then down the stretch in the fourth quarter, it just didn't work out. Wolves trail the Denver Nuggets two games to zero. Here we go. Oh, oh, what? Oh, come on! So most likely it's going to be a two-segment show. Just kind of talking about the games themselves a bit. And then fan interaction. We'll just kind of go like that. It's kind of that's kind of how the show is going to be from here on. I'm guessing this is going to be the last like scheduled show from here on. It's going to be kind of like the rainy days and Sundays bits. I think I hinted at that last week even. But you know how April weather is in Minnesota. It's unpredictable. Doesn't make it fun or anything. It's just what it is. It's unpredictable. So being here in Golden Valley, Minnesota. Some of you are in Australia and New Zealand and apparently several other countries. So really appreciate that. Um, mostly Australia and New Zealand, but uh, obviously there's a lot of you elsewhere as well, or at least some of you, maybe soldiers or something listening in other countries, or people literally from there, like India, apparently, uh, apparently Timberwolves Explosion has a following in India, which is really cool, so hello India, it's a, it's a pleasure, it really is. Um, well, what do we talk about now? I guess we'll talk about the Thunder game very briefly. This was fun, it's kind of a, an example of how fun this team can be to watch. Kind of up and down the court, everything was clicking, Anthony Edwards didn't even have a great game, but he made the most of it after having that sucky game against the Clippers. Uh, SGA, Sergei Gilders, Gilgis Alexander got a Rudy Gobert elbow in the eye socket area, unfortunately. Not intentional, just kind of incidental contact and all that. Uh, but one way or another, not a good night for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, and an interesting strategy by uh, Tim Conley, apparently, as Chris Finch gave him credit, um, him being Tim Conley, sorry, moving Nikhil Alexander... Nikhil Alexander Walker, pardon me, Naw, as we like to call him, the cousin of Shea Gilgis Alexander, so like the three name bit. So Carl Anthony Towns apparently no relation, but these two guys have relation. They're cousins. Um, put put him as a starting small forward to guard SGA, NAW to guard SGA, and uh, well, S- <laughs> NAW Naw Nikhil Alexander Walker is a really nice defender with those long arms. Um, definitely underrated and also a good solid offensive player as well. Somebody I would like to keep on this team for many years, if humanly possible. Um, definitely some ta- uh, some talent, definitely some ability, some hidden talent that some people may not have saw for a little while. Um, but a comfortable win for the Wolves overall, where you got to empty the bench. You got to see Josh Minaj, who looks pretty promising, a three-point shot and a couple baskets. Wendell Moore and Austin Rivers both came in as well for three minutes. Nathan Knight, not so great, unfortunately. Um, and you'll see more of him in the next game. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns had one of his best games, in, in a while, there's no doubt about it, blocking some shots. Nikhil Alexander-Walker blocked a couple shots, had three steals. Conley also providing some, uh, you know, uh, creating some turnovers as well as the Wolves wind up with 11 steals in the game. Extremely impressive. Still 16 turnovers because things got a little sloppy. But you had 10 players and double figures in the rebounding department. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns with 11, Gobert and Anthony Edwards also with 10 each. So an impressive overall fun night for the Timberwolves. And then reality sets in pretty quickly. Is it's like, yeah, we're just an eighth seed, unfortunately. Even though Denver's not the prettiest, most exciting eighth uh, number one seed in the history of the Western Conference or the Eastern Conference, for that matter. 
But, uh, well, it still kind of looked and felt looked and felt <laughs> like a uh, one versus eight in these two games, especially the first one. Um, 109-80. What more can you say? It was uh, dog dookie. It really was. Um, Carl Anthony Towns, well, he got his 10 rebounds. That's great. 5 of 15 from the floor. 1 of 7 from downtown. And you're going to hear from uh, Charles Barkley what he has to say about Carl Anthony Towns. We'll talk about that uh, in the second game, though, because that's when Chuck actually made the statement after that. Um, I don't know, uh, but the, there's going to be a new new, uh, <laughs> new nickname for Carl Anthony Towns at times when he plays this way, kind of hanging out on the perimeter all the time. Useless height. Useless height. As uh, I believe that's going to be the title of this episode, unless I have some weird brain fart at the end of the episode or get some crazy idea at the last second. What, whatever happens, happens. Uh, Jalen Noel did get 12 points off the bench, kind of out of nowhere, and really appreciate that. Hitting half of its threes, three of six anyway. Uh, Conley kind of, eh, he's, I, I don't know. He didn't turn the ball over, but didn't do a whole lot else either. I don't know. He made a couple threes. We appreciate that. Anthony Edwards struggled, six of 15. Just kind of everybody struggled. Denver kind of did whatever they want, and it was kind of a laugher. Uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker remaining in the starting lineup at the small floor position, which is okay. Using that length and blocking a shot and all that, we appreciate that. Did a hell of a lot more than Torian Prince in about 21 and a half minutes, who scored zero or zero points, missed three three-pointers, and yay, was a minus 14. Um, Torian Prince, you just never know, you know? Torian Prince is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. I don't know, and so was Carl Anthony Towns. You never know what you're going to get. The whole damn team is a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Except maybe, hopefully, Anthony Edwards. But even he's become inconsistent of late. I think as he gets stronger and better, as he becomes more and more... I don't know. He's just been in the league longer. More experienced and all that. Learning more and more of the tricks of the trade, so to speak. Um, I think he'll get more and more consistency out of him. As to the other guys, I mean, Gobert? Yeah, I don't know. Yay. Well, I'm appreciating that he blocked a couple shots and had 13 rebounds, but... I don't know. It felt like he got his ass handed to him. It really did. And it felt like everybody got their ass handed to them by this Denver team. Nikola Jokic half the time he didn't... Or Jokic, sorry. He didn't even look good half the time. <laughs> Does he, though? Yet, he is. And we appreciate how good he is and all that. Um, he is good, but I don't know. It just feels like... just felt like Denver kind of did whatever the heck they wanted. Man. Um, I don't know. It was an awful first game. Nonetheless, Michael Porter Jr. again had a very strong performance, even though he didn't have the greatest numbers necessarily, but he played so well uh, down the stretch. Um, overall, four of nine from downtown, absolutely a you know a solid game. It's like nobody was really great for Denver except maybe Jamal Murray, and even him, his shooting percentage wasn't so hot. But this first game was just you know typical, like I don't know. There's nothing really positive that you can come out of this game. I mean, I, I don't care if there was a positive stretch here and there for the Wolves or anything like that. There's nothing positive about this game. It was just kind of like, is it valuable experience for the playoffs for guys like Anthony Edwards and maybe Nikhil Alexander-Walker? I don't know. <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns has been in the league eight years. I think he's got enough by now experience, even though it's not like they've been in the playoffs 20 times. But this is his third appearance in the postseason, by the way. So eventually it's like, okay, you're not a baby anymore. Let's go. You're You're, you're not. Um... Games like this made you feel like we're babies, I guess. I don't know. We're just not up to the challenge. And Denver just kind of kicked our ass. <laughs> 109-80. That's about all I got to say about that. The next game was much more interesting. And as fun as the OKC Thunder game was, and as crucial as it was because you lose, you're out. But this one, in a lot of ways, is our feature presentation. And now, our feature presentation. In so many ways. Positive and negative. It's our feature presentation. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, 122-113. The Wolves lose. We're down two games to zero in the series. And, well, uh, we're still alive, though. We, we, we haven't even played a home game yet. You know I mean? It, just, just look at all the positives. You know, we, we can build on this. I hope so. I hope we can build on it. Anthony Edwards looked absolutely freaking spectacular. I hope we can build on that. Sure. Um, and I've got a statement to say that's going to annoy... Timberwolves fans that grew up with the greatest player ever, in their opinion, Kevin Garnett. Yes, in their opinion. Um, sometimes we look back at some of these players, and Michael's not included in this, almost like a mythical creature, where like we make them better than they were. 
as great as Garnett was, when I hear comments and statements of how like what a, like he was like a genius offensively and stuff, and like yeah, and all the moves, and he was a genius about this and that, and I don't know, he was like the greatest leader of all time. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, certainly offensively, I I don't think Garnett had what Anthony Edwards has. I really don't. Uh, offensively, I don't think there's any doubt. Actually. Um, heck, even Carl Anthony Towns, people might say that his offense is better than Garnett's, generally speaking. And I guess, obviously, Garnett's a better player than Carl Anthony Towns. I can comfortably say that. Anthony Edwards, though, long term. Anthony Edwards, long term. Let's uh, let's uh, keep the door open for that conversation. I'll pump. You know, we can always pump the brakes a bit. I'm not putting Anthony Edwards ahead of uh, Kevin Garnett just yet. No, of of course not. But how about this? Did Kevin Garnett go on the road in a playoff game and score 41 points like at age 21, the way Anthony Edwards is? Uh, so, I mean, that was an impressive performance. It really was. Now, again, is he going to follow it up with another like 5 of 15, eight, uh, 15, eight, 15 to 18 point game? Maybe. So, there, there, there is that. There's the youth. But I, I really think there's something there with Anthony Edwards long term that he really is the best player long term for the Wolves and might even get in the Garnett conversation at some point in the future. It's going to take time for it to officially head in that direction, but I think the, the door should be left open for that. Carl Anthony Towns, I don't think so. I don't think so. He's uh, Whatever I saw about Garnett that I didn't necessarily like in the playoffs at times, where I don't know. It felt like he was always looking for someone else to kind of take over. It, it felt that way with Garnett, often. Now I could hear a lot of you screaming at your iPods or, or you know earbuds or whatever right now. What an idiot. Is he crazy? No, I'm not crazy. No, I'm not crazy. I just didn't get necessarily blinded by Garnett's quote-unquote greatness. I didn't get blinded by it over the years. Eventually, I kind of started looking at things more objectively. It's okay to be a fan. I want the Wolves to win. I really want the Wolves to win. I want them to sweep Denver. I, I wish this was 4 nothing Wolves at the end of this series and that we were like the number 2 or number 3 seed or something in the West and on our way possibly to an NBA Finals. I really wish that. Because wouldn't that be fun? And this would have been a hell of a year to do it. Potentially. Of course, you got some tough teams out in the East, but who knows? Who knows? If you're playing well at the right time, maybe you are the NBA champ. But I, I so wish that's, what, where we, that's where we were. I so wish. But I really see something out of Anthony Edwards long term. I really do. That there, there is absolutely something there, um, particularly offensively, that Garnett actually never truly had. There, there is more of that takeover ability in Anthony Edwards offensively that Garnett lacked forever. That every one of us in our that are now in our forties and fifties probably, that uh, you know we're around Garnett in our twenties and thirties. <laughs> you know, we're fans of Garnett in our twenties and thirties and even teens and such, late teens when he was first, you know, in the NBA in my case. Um, you know, late teens at the beginning of his career. Yeah, mid to late teens. Sorry, I don't need to explain that much. You're probably bored with it. Um, but, there, yeah, we, we saw it. It was always like, take over, damn it, take over. Come on, come on. Do you remember that? Any of you old enough, do you remember that? So, again, we can't just worship a guy like he was this, uh, you know, like this godlike figure because... Well, frankly, no NBA player is a godlike figure. <laughs> None of them are. Some of them might think they are, but they're not. But you get the idea. Like this, you know, m almost like a mythical creature in Timberwolves lore and NBA lore and, and, and other ca in other players' cases um, where he might make them a little better than they were. Uh, a little bit. So just again, you know, I'm just saying. I, I think there's a little bit extra with Anthony Edwards where... I think he's going to be a special player with this team for a very long time, and he just might enter that conversation. Uh, and we're seeing signs of it at times. Obviously, again, his, his youth and immaturity, possibly, are what are holding him back at the moment. Now, there were some spectacular block shots in this game as well. Rudy Gobert had at least one really good one. Um, Anthony Edwards had a spectacular block on Nikola Jokic, and we'll have that conversation as well some more off of uh, Twitter Whew, you know, off of Twitter, what a great cover, what a great one that one was. Um, Tanae Brown, yep, <laughs> sending that one, that was awesome, 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 awesome. And again, just seeing it again made me very excited. Uh, Conley, an, an okay game, 14.7 assists and all that. Torian Prince re-enters the starting lineup. He, he had an okay game, but he ran into foul trouble. Colonel Anthony Towns ran into foul trouble. Five fouls for Colonel Anthony Towns, five fouls for Torian Prince, five fouls for Rudy Gobert, and Jamal Murray toasted us and roasted us and did a little Michael Jordan imitation off and on throughout the game. 
uh, kind of a kind of a turnaround shot around the elbow and, and all that stuff like that that kind of helped bury the Wolves three-pointer after three-pointer six of ten from downtown Denver didn't exactly torch us from downtown in fact they only attempted 22 well the percentage is good but only 10 three-pointers made so if we were on the uh, we have the we have the threes type of deal we would have lost out with that if we were if you're we in Denver or whatever but which is funny but this field goal percentage was super high for Denver most of the way 54 percent that's the problem as well as Anthony Edwards played in that awesome third quarter couldn't stop anybody and they were hitting their shots to their credit uh, Craptavius Caldwell crap I don't know I'm just kidding as uh, Vince Germano didn't wasn't a big fan of his with the Lakers and I don't blame him what a disappointment Ah, what a disappointment. And yeah, only 3 of 10 from the floor. That's great. <laughs> That's great. But of course, at least one of them were uh, at a bad time, like a mid-range shot. Jeff Green actually looked a little younger on a alley-oop dunk. Nice play coming off the bench there. Um, but Jamal Murray roasted us and toasted us throughout the night, as he tends to do. <sighs> kind of like uh, CJ McCollum roasting us and toasting us for passing on him on the passing on him in the draft years ago. Jamal Murray, we passed on him. One of the stupidest effing drafts of all time. Uh, you know, and I was okay with Chris Dunn because I thought he was going to be a really good player, kind of a defensive player and a good point guard. But I still was plugging the hell out of Jamal Murray. Again, listen back to that one years ago during that draft. What year was that? Um, 17? I think that was the 17 draft or was it the 16 draft? It was a little ways back. Um, but Jamal Murray, obviously, again, I mean... Whew, as long as you don't end up trading him for Jimmy Butler. So that must have been 17. Yeah, because 17, 18 was Jimmy Butler, I believe, right? I said, I'm completely stupid here. 17, 18. Yeah, that was the 17, 18 season when we acquired Jimmy Butler. Uh, I don't think we would have traded away Jamal Murray. Um, yeah, so it would have been the 16 draft. Yeah, because it was a year later when we traded away Chris Dunn. Yeah, it was... Uh, Zach Levine, ouch. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, I would, I'd rather have Jamal Murray than Zach Levine. I remember I got in a conversation with Wolves fans about that one. They're like, are you sure about that? Oh, I'm still on Zach Levine, man. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, Jamal Murray. I'm sorry. <laughs> and both of them had an ACL, unfortunately. Jamal Murray and uh, Zach Levine. But, no, I'm sorry, Jamal Murray. Uh, I'll take Jamal Murray. Absolutely. He's, he's, he's the better number 27. Sorry, Rudy Gobert. He's the better number 27. <laughs> Let's be honest with that. Um, which is really sad considering how much we gave up. And obviously that's a conversation that's going to haunt us forever until maybe, I don't know, maybe we try to correct it in the summer. If Tim Conley is still our president of basketball operations. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. We'll get to that in segment number two. Yes, we will, because there's some fan interaction conversation about that. Um, entertaining game and all that. It was fun, but a crappy finish. Couldn't stop anybody. And, I don't know, if they're making their shots, they're making their shots. We're happy for them. Lottie freaking da. I'm so happy Denver Nuggets shot 54% from the floor. And our defense just, I don't know, it, it looked good at some times. At some times, our, our defense looked promising. And then it was like, never mind, we're not playing defense. Okay, okay, now we're going to play defense. Okay, now we're not going to play defense. Okay, now we'll play defense. Oh, crap, now we gave up that one. What more can you say? It all chalks up to a crock of crap. I don't know. Kind of. Trailing two games to zero is not fun. Uh, it's not overly shocking and all that. Denver is a pretty good basketball team. Jamal Murray is a hell of a player, and I wish he was on the Wolves. I'm sure we could figure something out with him and Anthony Edwards. They don't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be one or the other. I'm sure we could have figured something out. <laughs> but, I don't know. That's a conversation for another decade. I don't know. I mean, Anthony Edwards maybe could play small forward. He's a big guy who can rebound the heck out of the ball and block shots. But, I don't know. He could play either position, I'm sure. They'd figure something out. Um, yeah, it would have been a fun, dynamic duo, let, let me tell you. But, it is what it is. Who knows? Who knows what position we would have been in anyway? It is what it is. I'll, I'd probably rather long-term have Anthony Edwards, but right now Jamal Murray is definitely way ahead because he's been around longer. So, unfortunately, he's, he's uh, Stan's ACL as well, so he got that kind of nonsense. All right, Carl Anthony Towns. I've been delaying this forever. Carl Anthony Towns. Charles Barkley has something to say about that. To pick it back on Shaq's point, if you're the second best player on a team, you got to play like it. Carl Anthony Towns has more turnovers than made baskets. 
that's not going to get it done, three for 12. Rudy, Rudy Gobert is not known as a scorer. Hasler had 19 tonight. But it's really going to come down, because Carl Anthony Towns should actually have an advantage, size-wise. Uh, but, but see, he's ruined this game, in my opinion, by just becoming a three-point shooter. If you're as big as he, are, he is, you're going to have a size, height advantage every single night. But if you're going to stand out on the perimeter, two things. You don't get to the foul line, uh, and, you, and you don't use your height. So it, it's, it's useless height. So, and that's what bothers me about his game. I'm like, he's, probably, he's one of the few guys in the NBA who's going to have a height advantage every single night. There's no player he's going to play against where he's going to have a height disadvantage. But because he's become a perimeter player, he don't punish them when they go small. And uh, he just turned out there and shoot jumpers. Uh, yes, thank you, Charles. Thank you. And do I disagree with anything he said? No. Absolutely not. Why would I do that? <laughs> Why would I disagree with him? Uh, let's see. Five turnovers and three field goals made. Okay, he checked. He got that right. Um... He hangs around the perimeter way too much. Check. Uh, is it useless height to just hang around the perimeter when you're seven feet tall? Check. Anything else? Anybody have a complaint? Anybody have a comeback to Charles Barkley on that one? I sure don't. Do, do I like it? Do I like it that the TNT crew thinks we're just kind of like a joke and a waste of time? Of course not. I hate it. But what are you going to do? What the hell are you going to do about it? Like, like play better? Uh, you know? Yeah. Why didn't Carl Anthony Towns show up the past couple of games, especially this one? So, it, I don't know. I mean, we appreciate Anthony Edwards. He definitely led the way. And Rudy Gobert had a couple of good moments as well defensively. He was he was not bad. Rudy Gobert was not bad, and Conley was decent at times. Obviously, Nikhil Alexander-Walker continuing to be a factor more defensively and offensively in this one, for sure. He's, he didn't exactly shoot well either, one of five from downtown. But at least he made 14 threes. Woohoo! So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> There's always that. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, yeah, 16 minutes with one basket by Jalen Noel and nothing else. That's always great. 16 minutes? Jeez, 16 minutes with one basket. Uh, um, Kyle Anderson kind of losing his cool in game number one. I forgot to mention that. You know, Kyle Anderson is this tough guy. He's wonderful and this and that. He's got leadership skills. But occasionally, he lets that temper get to him way too much. Occasionally, occasionally, no, yeah, he'll he'll just let it go way overboard, which is kind of scary. Um, and then Rudy Gobert lost it a little bit for a minute as well, getting a technical foul, running away from like Ed Malloy basically, and like, and then they called a T on him, and of course, uh, Kyle Anderson is trying to calm him down. So a lot of us might look at that as kind of a, a nice image, I guess, after the uh, incident two weeks ago. So, yeah, well, not even two weeks ago; it was like a week and a. It was like, I don't know, a week and change ago. Crazy to think all that happened like less than two weeks ago. It's weird. But again, the Wolves trailed two games to zero in a game where, well, it was much more entertaining. It was very enjoyable to watch, but still another crappy finish that has a lot of us uh, shaking our heads and extremely frustrated, to say the least. The, the uh, <laughs> Lone Wolf Award for this week, for this week, for the past, past three games, I have to go with Anthony Edwards. Carl Anthony Towns had a phenomenal game against OKC. We really appreciate that, but now kind of reminding us of the other guy that we traded away to get Mike Conley. Uh, oh, 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 what's his name? Uh, D'Angelo Russell, who had a great game against the Clippers and then he did nothing against Memphis last year. Nothing. Carl Anthony Towns had a great game against the Oklahoma City Thunder, along with Nikhil Alexander-Walker and along with Anthony Edwards, but it was a phenomenal game by uh, Carl Anthony Towns. One of the most efficient games probably of his life. Even though it might not have been the greatest statistics of all time. Like 28 points is, is good. It's really good. It's not phenomenal. Like 50 points. And Carl Anthony Towns had what a 60 point game last year. And that was fun. But then you follow it back up with, with these two meh games against Denver. Meh at best. To, to lead to a point where Charles Barkley says that's basically useless height. And how could I disagree with that? I remember flipping out. Uh, years ago in a Chicago Bulls game where Carl Anthony Towns was literally just standing at the perimeter like a shooting guard. That's not your. That's not you. That's not you, Carl. That's not who you are. It's okay to do it sometimes, but the whole game or two-thirds of the game or something like that, that's not you. That's not you. 
Body up, man. Body up. You you have the ability to do so. It's all there, 100%. Body up. Body up and go out and play. And unfortunately, um, I don't know. He just didn't do it enough. 3 of 12 for a guy like him, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. And just kind of looking, I, I, I'm, I'm a great shooter. And that lackadaisical attitude, which was a huge, 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 huge red flag by... I believe it was both of them, Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns at the end of uh, game one. That was a red flag, boy, where they were basically like, oh, well, you know, I just didn't shoot well. You know, I'm you know, just kind of looking at the numbers like, oh, I didn't shoot well. If that's all you care about is you didn't shoot well, or if, if that's the only reason you think we lost is, you know, yeah, everything's fine, whatever. That didn't, that did not look good. <laughs> that did, that was not a good look at all. Um, Mike Conley, a much better conversation about, like, basically, like, playing smarter, playing better, basically. More, more, uh, better effort and everything. Versus just, oh, I didn't shoot well. That was embarrassing. 11 points. He actually had less points in the, uh, in the first game. Oh, I just didn't shoot well. Uh, you know, I'm the best shooter, I'm one of the best shooters ever. And I didn't shoot well. Okay? Sure. Sure you didn't. Carl Anthony Towns, despite a phenomenal game against OKC Thunder, the f way you followed up in these two games... I have no choice <laughs> but to give you the Johnny Flynn Memorial. I have no choice. It has to go to Carl Anthony Towns. It has to. Uh, Jalen Noel had some meh games. Mike Conley was mediocre at times, but he wasn't that bad. He, he really wasn't. And we're counting more on Carl Anthony Towns than, than you know most of the players on this team. It has to go to Carl Anthony Towns and with a bullet. And this one, Anthony Edwards will bring home the Lone Wolf Award, especially for that phenomenal performance versus uh, Denver in the second game, particularly in the second half of the second game, but also the, uh, you know, very solid performance versus OKC Thunder as well. Uh, but, I mean, almost anybody on the team could have got a Johnny Flynn Memorial in the first game. It was that bad. So <laughs> every one of them was a candidate for it because of the first game. You're all candidates, every one of you. So uh, with that said... Let's uh, look across the NBA very shortly here. Might as well just look across the league, talk about just kind of brief, brief, brief little ongoing conversations about all the other series. Milwaukee, Miami, not sure what happened there. It was kind of weird uh, with Jimmy Butler. Uh, great first game and all that. And what was it like? Somebody helping Jimmy Butler with his company a little bit. I'm all, Oh, with, with coffee. Yeah, kind of helping him out with like grinding his coffee or something. Because Jimmy Butler's got like some kind of coffee company. So... Okay, but uh, somebody in Milwaukee helped Jimmy Butler grind his coffee or something. And I don't know, it's a cute little story where I guess in Philadelphia people would think it's the worst thing ever. Here, oh, it's the cutest thing ever. Uh, uh, you know what? Why is it even a conversation? Who who cares? Who cares? That's like, I don't know. That's like E-section uh, news that I don't really look at the E-section. I just don't. Sorry. Um, otherwise, Miami won the first game after that, apparently. And then Milwaukee came back and beat them pretty good in the second game, so it's one-to-one -one at the moment. Cleveland, New York, I expect this one to probably, possibly go the distance. New York beat Cleveland pretty impressively in the first game, and then Cleveland played a decent whooping on New York in the second game, winning by 17. So that series is knotted up, and should be a, should be a good one. Hoping to God that nothing happens with this. Philadelphia, Brooklyn, it's all Philadelphia. All Philadelphia, and possibly the MVP of the league, Joel Embiid, not dominating the Brooklyn Nets. Three games to zero, doesn't look like a whole lot of problems going on there. I thought that I'm mad at myself for picking the Brooklyn Nets to win that one. Um, just flat out overmatched at the moment. We'll see what Philadelphia does in the next round, though. As most likely they'll be taking on Boston in round two because the Hawks aren't going to present a whole lot of resistance either. Boston just destroyed them in the first game and beat them pretty soundly in number two. So it is what it is. Wolves, of course, trail two games to zero. We kind of had a conversation about that. Uh, Paul George apparently is out, so that sucks for the Clippers who had played very well in the first game, but the Phoenix Suns have won the next two. Not, not my favorite player in the world. Uh, Devin Booker at 45 points. He's a good player, but I don't know. Not my favorite guy, let me tell you. Uh, Norman Powell, 42 points. And I am going to give credit where credit is due. He may have been a huge bust for the Los Angeles Lakers. But Russell Westbrook has been pretty good for the Clippers. He, You know, he's been... He's been better, to, to give him credit. And even Bones Highland, 20 points off the bench. How about that? And this is in a losing effort, unfortunately, for the uh, Clippers. Uh, Norman Powell with 42 points. Norman Powell with 42 points. No Kawhi Leonard, no Paul George. And they almost won the game, actually. So tons of credit to those three guys. Um, very impressive. Nicholas Batum, 19 minutes of 
crap, except for a couple block shots, I guess. Woohoo. Um, Kevin Durant, very solid. Josh Akogi, six points off the bench. I don't know. I'm kind of dragging this longer than I should, but I don't know. Uh, Russell Westbrook has been a lot better for the Clippers than he was with the Lakers. Um, I don't know. It's a better fit, I guess. And maybe it's just kind of like, hey, you know, your career could be coming to a screeching halt here very soon if you don't get your head out of something um, at some point here. Uh, Golden State finally won a game and without Day Day, and I'm not happy about it at all. Uh, Day Day, I don't even use nicknames. I think they're overrated and annoying. But um, yeah, Raymond Green in the second game losses. The Kings took a two game to zero lead over the Golden State creeps. Uh, <laughs> I hate him. Yeah, I hate him. Sorry. I don't like the Warriors, okay? I think you figured that out by now. Um, yeah, they took a two game to zero lead, the Sacramento Kings and uh, Draymond Green. Who, as much as I don't like him, I do. Th I I do think he's very much in the Hall of Fame conversation. I think he's a modern day Dennis Rodman in both ways, both ways. Except minus the insane, crazy E section crap. We'll leave it at that. Uh, e section or X X X section. We'll leave it there. <laughs> minus some of that crap. <laughs> he's he's a modern day Rodman in a lot of ways. Uh, him being Draymond Green. Um, in terms of obviously defensive player who can, you know, he, he's, he's, he's basically like a winning player. If you, people might say Carl Anthony Towns is a losing player and you're not going to get a whole lot of argument from me right now on that. Draymond Green's a winning player, whether you like him or not. Dennis Rodman was a winning player, whether you liked him or not. Um, brought that tenacity that could drive other teams nuts, but then also could get himself in trouble too by losing his temper or whatever, losing his mind. And Dennis Rodman did the same crap. Way too much. Um, probably more, actually. <laughs> but uh, similarly, and I think both of them are Hall of Famers for what they've brought to their teams in their careers. Uh, anyhow, the Sacramento Kings lost their first game of the series without, and, and again, Golden State without Raymond Green at the moment. Steph Curry went out for 36. I suppose that helps. Kevin Looney had 20 rebounds. And Andrew Wiggins, who did return uh, in time for the postseason anyway, from the personal issues that we have no idea about, and I will not pry into them. And not that I could anyway. How how am I going to pry into Andrew Wiggins' life anyway? But if even if I could, I wouldn't. It's just there's no reason to. Um, you want <laughs> if I was Joe Q reporter for the Golden State Warriors, and Andrew Wiggins wanted to talk to me about it, okay. But <laughs> that would be about as far as I would go about that kind of stuff. Um, unfortunately, the freaking uh, Kings lost, and I'm not happy. But we'll see. Luckily, the Sacramento Kings still have a two games to one lead, and hopefully they finish the job, because the last thing I want is this freaking Warriors team to get hot again and, and make a playoff run. I, I just, I've had enough. Um, what have you done for me lately? Apparently, this is floating around right now on Yahoo. The Raptors have reportedly fired Nick Nurse, who led the team to their only title in 1819. Uh, the old, what have you done for me lately? He's a pretty good coach. And uh, if the Wolves are, for some reason are unhappy with Chris Finch. Maybe that's an option. I, I don't know. Maybe. Um, I like Chris Finch, but obviously there are some things on his resume right now that aren't too pretty. Uh, a lot a lot of double-digit leads evaporating. That's not a good thing. Memphis and the Lakers, that's still just one game apiece. Interestingly enough, Memphis did win the second game after the Lakers had an impressive uh, game one win in uh, Memphis. That was pretty cool. Uh, most of the important players are healthy for... The Los Angeles Lakers. They did recently acquire Tristan Thompson, but he has not been playing. Tristan Thompson, the former uh, Cleveland Cavalier when they won a championship, but then the next year he wasn't good. It was so disappointing. Hasn't been good since, really. Um, D'Angelo Russell is typical five-point game. Isn't that just great? So they could have used your help, D'Angelo. Two of 11. Oh, D'Angelo. You know, as, Matt, as Mike Conley's been the last few games, the last two games or so, uh, in a you know, I'll take him any day over D'Angelo Russell. Seriously. Even at his age. Even at his age. That, that's how crappy D'Angelo Russell can be and inconsistent. Uh, Rui Hachimura has been a wonderful find for the Lakers, obviously. And he was a very highly touted uh, player, prospect, whatever, in the draft just a couple of years ago. So, again, nice acquisition. There's a guy named Shaquille on the Lakers. Harrison, apparently. He played 30 seconds. Shaquille Harrison. Um, anyhow... <laughs> With that said, I'll take a quick break and we'll come back for some fan interaction. And 
we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion. Again, I hope you didn't mind me getting into the, the league a little bit. And why the heck not? I mean, it's not what we used to do with Marcus in the past as well. We had a lot of fun with that. Probably were non-wolves a little too much on that show when it was me and Marcus. But, oh well. A super brief plug will be... Uh, if you, uh, you'll notice there's a link in the show description talking about uh, joining crypto.com. Basically there, yeah, you can start your account. You know, it'll show that I referred you when you click on the link. You'll have $25 put in your account. And that way, you know, it'll help you get started. I mean, cryptocurrency, the fees are insanely cheap, especially if you're just buying a small amount. It's like a tiny percentage. So it would only add up, like say, if you're using buying thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars or something, or selling thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, it, it adds up eventually. But when it's small amounts, you're not really spending anything, first and foremost. Also, um, also again, it's a fun way to go. It's a fun way to trade cryptocurrency and all that. It's a, you know, and it's a nice alternative to the stock market as well in terms of that it's always there. It's always active. It's always available 365 days a year versus the stock market. But I understand, you know, I understand that people might be uh, skittish about it, but why not give it a try? Uh, I'm not going to come up here and say, you're going to be a millionaire. Oh, you're going to make $20,000 next month. Uh, that's BS. That's BS. I ignore all of that kind of stuff. You can tell me that till you're blue in the face. Yeah. You might do it once or twice if you're insanely lucky. Yeah, and some people, you know, and, and that's wonderful. Maybe you are really good at everything and good for you, but uh, it's definitely not going to be everybody. With that said, let's get to fan interaction. I've done enough. Uh, let's go to Twitter account, at TWolvesEX, at TWolvesEX. Derek Felska, out of western Wisconsin, and a big friend of Brave the Wild, and also does his own podcast now, the Crease Assist Podcast, talking about the Minnesota Wild, just like Brave the Wild. So we both kind of help each other out, shouting out to each other, and and comment on each other's shows. It's a lot of fun. Derek Felska, uh, we're both big, big hockey guys as well. So, um, Levi Brown out of New Zealand. Tanae Brown out of New Zealand. Vinrock Vince Germano out of Australia, Melbourne, Australia. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, apparently, he's the Lakers head of scouting and assistant to the general manager of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, oh, no, that's, that's, uh, that's what the Lakers... An assistant to the general manager, <laughs> Cleveland Browns consultant, nine-time basketball or basketball premiership player. Interesting. <laughs> I love that. That's kind of a fun. Uh, that's a fun description on your uh, Twitter account at binrock44. Um, sounds like they're coming back though. Them being the uh, the courtside podcast. That's going to be a lot of fun. So highly, highly recommended. Wayne Hunt, who is a Memphis fan. Stu Benson and Vin Rock, Vince Germano are Lakers fans, so that could be an interesting back and forth between those guys, considering that's a series right now. So we'll see. LRS, Minnesota sports fan 123. He was replying to something. I said, well, we made it. Yep, that was after beating the Oklahoma City Thunder. LRS says, great game. Really wish McDaniels wouldn't have spazzed out. Yep. I think if we were healthy, the Wolves could have upset uh, the Nuggets. I, I think so, too. I think so, too. Yeah, but, yeah, and I wrote that. I think so, too. He's extremely valuable. Just such a bummer. Him being Jake McDaniels. And Nas Reed, too, though, too. Can you imagine that? Wouldn't that have been great? Uh, it's a damn shame. It truly is. Uh, try to back up here some more. Tanae Brown says... Was I responding? Yep, yeah, well, we made it. Yep. And then I said, uh, can't say I was expecting an easy win, but makes a nice change. And it ended up being a nice, uh, easy win, didn't it, Levi? That was awesome. Uh... Dane, Dane Moore tweeted uh, something where Anthony Edwards says, once I found out Rudy was playing, I kind of knew we already had the game. Interesting. Uh, so that was Dane Moore tweeting what Anthony Edwards said. Tony Round uh, doing the quote tweet saying, this has been a problem with the Wolves all season, though. Look at the record against teams in which we already had the game. Yeah, see? Glad we won today. And I know it's just a fun quote from Edwards, but it's that entitlement to winning that has been the problem. Yes. Yes. Remember how uh, Malik Beasley used to talk like that all the time? Like, oh, you know, we thought we were going to win easily with the Houston Rockets. You know, ugh. You know, like, I mean, come on. And then, you know, that led to John Krasinski being like, what success have you had? Like, stop acting like you're this this great team who's had, who's done so much. Like, what success have you had? And Because that, that was before the Wolves even started making the postseason. An extremely disappointing loss to the Houston Rockets. I think it was two years ago 
where the Wolves were not going to make the playoffs. It was insanely frustrating watching the Wolves get beat by uh, horrendous teams like that. So, yes, I, I agree with Tanae. That is a huge thing, and I think the Wolves really need to stop with that nonsense. Like, treat every game like it's important. Seriously. Don't go out and kill yourself. You know, don't overdo it and kill yourself out there and get injured. I understand there's there's that, too, at times, where you have to maybe pace yourself during a game. Not pace yourself in terms of, okay, today I'm going to kind of take it easy. No, take it easy at times during the game, especially maybe you feel soreness in certain areas. And then, uh, yeah, obviously if, you know, uh, has to be, if, yeah, you know, maybe at, at times has to be taken out of the game if you think it's the right time, right place where you can prevent an injury or something. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, play every game like it's important because they are important. Losing to the Rockets is is embarrassing and stupid. And what if the Wolves lost to the, the uh, OKC Thunder because of the entitlement? So, great comment, Tanae. Great comment, Tanae. Uh, I was saying I really like Nikhil Alexander-Walker. That guy plays both sides of the ball, and honest to God, there's really something there. Yep, there's something there with the guy. Yep, nice release on the shot. Very aggressive defensively without being crazy and getting fouled out. Um, John Maxson says, extend him, Timmy. And it's like, yep, I, I agree, John, absolutely. Um, Benzo out of the Bronx says, let me check. I'm just checking something real fast, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, Benzo says, spot on, the young man can ball. He's a pretty good passer. Yeah, yeah, he is as well, and can play and guard one through three. NAW is our secret weapon, so to speak, LOL. He is, isn't he? I think he is our secret weapon. Um, Tanae Brown says, I like to think he was the main piece in the D-Lo trade. He's a talent for sure. Yep, main piece in terms of we're, we're going to be able to keep him for a while, potentially. Yes, uh, and yes, extend him, Timmy, as John said. Yes, <laughs> because, yeah, I mean... As long as we do extend him and don't, like, have some excuse to not keep him, so to speak, which would really suck, um, he is the main piece in the trade because Conley's not going to be here much longer. He's ancient, unfortunately. As much as I like Mike Conley, he's ancient. He's, he's not going to play forever. He's, like, what, he's... He's <laughs> how many years younger than me? Like, then some of us were like, he's only, like, six, seven years younger than me, and I'm 43, so... He's getting, he's getting up there in years, damn it. And it's a bummer. I wish he wasn't. Dan Winnesota, a huge friend to Brave the Wild, followed Timberwolves Explosion. He is also the author of uh, A Slapshot in Time, um, History of Heartbreak. Yep, does a great job. Minnesota sports historian and filmmaker, husband, father, teacher, pop culture nerd. But yep, also, again, a uh, um, he, he does the calendar of calamity, like on this day. Yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, or actually tweeted out. I think I did. Yeah, it's coming up later. Ah, uh, it's not showing. Okay, I think I was just responding to him. So I'll mention it here since I, so I don't forget. Uh, Dan Winnesota had tweeted out, it was a couple days ago on this day. Gosh, was it that long ago? Was it 17 years ago already? Because it was 06 when uh, Mark Madsen was launching three-pointers. He launched seven three-pointers and missed them all to help the Wolves uh, tank so we could hang on to our draft pick from the uh, infamous Sam Cassell for Marco Yarich trade. So we were able to hang on to that protected pick, which ended up hanging on for a long time. So we ended up losing it to the uh, Clippers, who eventually took um, Austin Rivers years later. Yes, the same Austin Rivers is now on the Timberwolves. So we have Austin Rivers, too. So we, we, we won that trade, you see. We won. No, I don't think anybody won that trade. The Clippers did for a little while, because Cassell was definitely the best player out of that group. But, I don't know, it was like within a year, Cassell started getting an attitude with, uh, uh, what was that guy's name? Dang it. I can see his face. Mike Dunleavy. Okay. I'm like, my brain is like, okay, it, it caught up. Yep. Mike Dunleavy. Because I remember, yeah, his son played too, obviously. Mike Dunleavy Sr. Yeah, it's just... It's Sam Cassell, I, boy, does he have a shelf life. It's like the first year, my God, he's the greatest ever. Who wouldn't want Sam Cassell? The next year, ah, oh, this guy's nuts. As good as he is, he's nuts. Just nuts. So that's why the Timberwolves ended up moving on as well. Uh, he hated... He loved Flip Saunders the first year, hated him the next. Dunleavy, same thing. Uh, probably Rick Edelman. No, he never played for Rick Edelman, did he? I know he got along with Rick Edelman. I don't know. My brain's stopping. That's uh, I'm getting it mixed up with Bobby Jackson, and he did. Uh, he was on the coaching staff with Rick Edelman. <sighs> Sorry, too many webs here in my head. Too much information. Sorry. Tanae Brown says, Towns is unplayable. He should score 40 points a game on Jokic. 
but he's too busy on the exactly. He's too busy on the perimeter trying to play point guard and just or shooting guard and just turning the ball over. Yep, like Carl Anthony Towns had more turnovers than shot attempts or the shots made anyway, um, and just turning the ball over. Had a had a guts full of his pathetic play. Pay Nas and trade Towns, perennial loser. I agree. I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. I hate to say it, but I agree. Yes. Um, see, it's not just angry Joey, angry old man Joey, who's just a bitter old man. He's 43 and he hates millennials and Gen Z. Well, I hate the attitude of some of them. And that's not what I don't like about Carl Anthony Towns. And I, I love Anthony Edwards most of the time. Uh, his inconsistency sucks, but he's too young. Um, anyhow, Tanae Brown was saying, Amen, brother. I can't believe so many Timberwolves fans don't see through all this nonsense. Certainly talented, but a massive underachiever. Uh, and then Tanae responds with, This third quarter has been great. Finally, some fight in them. Gotta keep the foot down. I'm worried with Edwards having four fouls. Yeah, he did. But I'm ecstatic at the effort here. Yep, it was fun, wasn't it? That third quarter was a lot of fun. It made the game entertaining because the Wild were getting thrumped on the other channel. Because, unfortunately, the NBA, uh, the Timberwolves and the Wild, for some damn reason, why why can't, why can't somehow, some way, the schedule be adjusted? <laughs> somehow, some way. Like, they had to push the Wolves game to effing Wednesday. You know what I mean? Why couldn't it have been on Tuesday when the game was on Sunday? The first game, uh, game one was on Sunday. That's all they had to do. Start that on Tuesday and then go. But nope, it's all some stupid bull crap. So the Wild and Wolves play the same night at the same time. The one good thing is if one of the teams is having an awful game and the other one's having a fairly entertaining game, you get to kind of switch around. But, of course, they had both on at the same time because thank, thank God for modern technology where I could have it on the uh, the laptop right in front of me. One game on the laptop, one game on the TV, and it's easy to go. Like right now, I can look right at the TV and see a guy holding a, a fish that he just released, which is good. That was, that's nice. Back into the lake. It looks like a lake trout. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah well, I'm doing Kimberl's explosion. So, <laughs> or I could be watching the wolves in the wild at the same time. That night, the wild were getting thromped. Wound up losing 7-3. to three. Check out Brave the Wild, <laughs> by the way. Um, whereas game one, the wolves were getting thromped. And, of course, still had that on. But was the wild were having a great game in Dallas. Um, so, it's kind of like that. Um, it's kind of funny how it was kind of opposite effect in <laughs> Game 1 and Game 2 for both teams. Uh, welcome to Minnesota sports, huh? And there was the great block. Today, uh, today Wilson-Brown says, Edwards was having a crack on offense in the first half, but his defense was completely lacking. This is one hell of a play to come back with the uh, uh, to come back with defensively in the third. Tim Rules clips Anthony Edwards' incredible block on Nikola Jokic. It was awesome. Kind of almost like, yeah, it was a LeBron type of block, like an athletic type of block coming up behind a player. One of those great blocks that LeBron had in that 2016 uh, NBA Finals that helped lead them to their championship over the bleeping Warriors in Game 7. Um, legendary block. I, and I think he had a, a block like that also in the Miami series with the Spurs, if I remember correctly if I remember correctly. Um, 2013, the last championship in Miami when everything went down the crapper in 2014 versus the Spurs. Tanae Brown responding to something. What's it about? Oh, yeah. I was saying, oh, yep. Oh, so I did quote tweet the uh, D'Anthony uh, Edwards. Dan Winnesota. I was saying, how could we forget this one? Dan Winnesota <laughs> says also, hashtag OTD, that's on this day, that was April 19th, Minnesota Sports History 2006, Mark Madsen goes over for 7 and 3 point attempts in a 9 minute span. Oh, remember that? I mean, was, the ball was clanging off the side of the backboard, like the rim in the backboard, you know, those horrible shots that some of us would throw up like in the gym when we're just messing around, where it's just, doof, the ball's almost getting stuck between the rim and the basket, or the backboard. That's not a good shot at all. <laughs> it was just like sitting at a, or screwing around at a health club or something. Um, anyhow, nine minutes banned during the Timberwolves' final game of the season versus Memphis. Madsen had not attempted a three-pointer in the previous 135 games. Whew. Hashtag NBA, raised by Wolves, and all that. So, yep, thank you, Dan Winnesota. Thank you very much. And Tanae Brown says, that's a $750 fine now. Ha ha. Yeah, it's kind of funny when you think about all that. So pathetic. Oh, it's funny. Um, yeah, Tanae Brown wraps up the fan interaction segment of a pretty fun show today, let me tell you. Even though circumstances aren't that great, but we still find a way to have fun, don't we, Tanae? 
I felt like every time someone was complaining, the Nuggets were scoring in frustration. Our transition. Ugh, so stupid, Joey. Like, I don't know if I'm dy dyslexic here or what. Felt like every time someone was complaining, the Nuggets were scoring in transition. So frustrating. Yeah, see, that's, yeah, that's a lot of reasons why we lost. They were just doing whatever they want, up and down the court and getting a layup or some kind of catch-and-shoot three or eventually, as maybe if the Wolves actually got back in time a little bit, there'd be a turnaround shot from the uh, the elbow from uh, Jamal Murray who torched us into the ground because he just, because he could. Because he could, you know? That's why. Because he could. That's the problem. He could. He could. Yeah, sorry, you get the point. Um, very fun show, though. Even though the circumstances suck, what a fun show. You know, I, I really appreciate you today. That was really awesome. Um, loved hearing from Benzo as well. Uh, Levi, Dan Winnesota. And who, who's the other, where's the other person? Where'd he go? Uh, where'd he go? Wasn't that John Maxson, right? Yep, John Maxson. Yep, really appreciate you as well. Um, thank you so much, all of you that have, uh, listen to the show, told your friends about it, and maybe you're using Spotify now. It's going to help the show grow on uh, this new uh, platform of Spotify for podcasters. I guess it's called a platform. I guess that's what you call it, or podcast provider. Whatever it's called, it's uh, it's probably our new home for, a, for the very long-term future. Uh, I was with HipCast since 2008, so, and then obviously October 31st, Halloween. Get out of here! But even before that, though, I was already joining... Um, the Basketball Podcast Network. It's like, believe it or not, Timberwolves Explosion was the first show to cross the bridge into the Basketball Podcast Network. Uh, the platform there, Megaphone, was really, really nice. But Spotify for Podcasters is really nice as well. Apparently, both of them kind of favored Spotify. Uh, it was like, I don't know if Spotify was like as a part owner of Megaphone, but I know they own this. So, whether, no matter how you feel about Spotify, it's where we're at now. Uh, obviously, you can use all the other apps that you've been using, like Stitcher, or Stitcher is stuck for some reason. So if you're wondering what's going on there, it's stuck. I don't know. Sometimes when you change platforms, it doesn't always go through right away. I'm not sure. I might contact them. iHeartRadio was stuck. That one has now gone through. It's like a block and a dam. Like there's some log in the way. And then, oh, it finally moved. And now the water's flowing again. So iHeartRadio is now flowing normally again for Timberwolves Explosion. Thank you, Lord. Um, Stitcher's the one that's still stuck. It seems like all the others, though, are caught up and rolling again. Purple Mafia had no problem whatsoever moving over, so that's nice. Um, but this show, I don't know, for some reason, it's something I must have messed up a while ago with HipCast. As remember, Apple Podcast was stuck for a while. That's because the whole RSS feed was, like, missing. Yeah, that really helps, not having Apple Podcasts. Wow, that was scary, but it's flowing nicely now. So now the last one to try to get the damn moving again, is uh, Stitcher, apparently, if you happen to be a Stitcher person, which I don't know if a whole lot of people use that one, but some of you do. But those of you using Spotify, thank you so much. Otherwise, uh, those of you that have written a positive rating on Apple Podcasts or other platforms, mostly Apple Podcasts, appreciate you so much. I, I really do. Um, I also really, really appreciate Scott Doherty, a uh, really, really nice guy who, uh, you know, uh, allows me to post like shout shout outs like hey Timberwolves Explosion is out on your favorite app whatever this and that like I normally do I uh, really appreciate Scott Doherty the uh, Facebook page Flip to Finch um, there are times I forget to shout out to him and I feel so bad uh, and I wish I shouted out a little sooner actually I'm kind of mad at myself I should shout out to him sooner but at least to get it in near the end of the show um, Flip to Finch Facebook page it's uh, it's an awesome Facebook page uh, and we also had fun for a while there with, uh, we have the threes. Like, oh, we get our beef and cheddars again. You know, Wolves got their 12 threes. So, uh, he's a really good guy. Uh, I remember he had surgery a lot, uh, like a month or two ago. Hope he's recovered well from it, um, and all of that. And, uh, really appreciate you, Scott. Just want you to know that. And anybody listening there, huge shout out to you. Uh, or, you know, listening and you're, you're a, a member of that page. Huge shout out to you as well. Uh, of course, the Courtside Podcast, I've heard rumblings and rumors that you guys are recording very soon and we'll be, be back in the podcasting world once again the courtside podcast you guys have been on a huge hiatus apparently uh, Wayne Hunt's you know obviously all of us are busy sons of guns all of us are uh, Wayne Hunt is obviously busy Vince Germano all of them Stu Benson but whenever you guys are available doing a show again we appreciate you so much 
So almost like a sister show to this one or a big brother or, or little brother or whatever, <laughs> whatever the term is. Um, Timberwolves Explosion, believe it or not, is older, but um, we had, let's just say we had less shows during the, the lockout because they were, they were doing them still weekly. Me and Marcus had like once a month or less, I think, during that time. So it is what it is. It was like one, it was like one in two months or something during that time. Yeah. Um, but those shows did super well because fans were so hungry to listen to Timberwolves and uh, NBA conversation. All right. I've babbled enough. Thank you again. Tell your friends about the show. Don't be afraid to call in sometime. Otherwise, tweeting is totally fun. Totally fine. Oh, wait, wait a minute. The Facebook page. Gee, many Christmas. I apologize. There's more to get to. There's more to get to. I am so mad at myself. But it's not too much. But yeah, it's something. The fan, it's an important conversation. Um, the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves Explosion. Uh, Star Tribune, Timberwolves boss Tim Conley starting to be mentioned as Wizards seek new leader. As of course he's from Maryland, Tim Conley's from Maryland, and Washington D.C. and Maryland are kind of like a, you know, it's the same area basically. Similar area, kind of like Minneapolis, St. Paul, that kind of thing. So there's rumors about him possibly leaving the Wolves to go to the Washington Wizards, quite possibly. Uh, Sean Grant, I believe he's in California, says maybe he can, <laughs> maybe he can trade seven of their first round picks for John Wall. Yep, that would be hilarious. And I was saying that's probably about what would happen. Steve uh, Bilderback says, good. Bye-bye. Yep, doesn't want to deal with him anymore. Uh, coming out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, Tene Brown, there he is, says, uh, what, what's the name of the city? Yep, uh, Dun, Dundin. Okay, you know, and he's originally from Alexandria, New Zealand, so now I can actually mention a city, and I should. I apologize that I haven't been. Uh, Janae says, would be really weird if he just left after one year, after this five-year deal, after his five-year deal, and go to the Wizards. I get the sentimental value, but that just seems like a team you wouldn't want to go to. Yeah, and also the fact of making that huge trade for Gobert, and then you just up and leave. It'd be really weird. Fred Mithin will wrap up this section with a haunting message. Let me tell you, I believe he's also from the Twin Cities here. Tanae Brown, yep, he's responding to him anyway. Not, if, you know, this is about the Wizards, not if you consider the league wants to go to Seattle and Las Vegas. Maybe he's going there to disenfranchise their fans, disassemble their roster, and give away their assets like he did here. And with that kind of that thinking look, hmm, I know which two teams I'd bet were likely to be moved. Yeah, wouldn't that be interesting? Where maybe... <laughs> NBCSports.com, Alex Rodriguez rumored to want Timberwolves relocated to Seattle. Ooh, I don't want to end on that note necessarily, but uh, so that would mean maybe Washington going to Las Vegas. I doubt the Wizards are going to Las Vegas, even though they've been a very unsuccessful franchise most of the time, except for 1978. But yeah, 1978 and 79. They went to the finals and lost to the Seattle Supersonics in that season. Um, both of those teams collecting their one and only championship during those two years when me and my brother were born. <sighs> well, that's a hunting message, Fred. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it's anything's possible, as Garnett once said. Uh, but it wouldn't, wouldn't be a very exciting version of anything's possible. But, oh, anything is possible. Norm Green was a very nice, fan-friendly owner of the Minnesota North Stars. And then he kept uh, demanding this and demanding that. And we didn't... Uh, as much as I'm annoyed with uh, political figures being jerks about building a new arena when it's absolutely needed in, in a, in a, in, during that time and during possibly with the Wolves coming up not too long from now um, because of revenue and all that. Uh, as much, as, uh, But Norm Green didn't exactly help either. His, his attitude the whole time uh, afterward didn't help, and the next thing you know, the team moved. So I don't know. You just never know. I'm guessing they're not moving, but you just never do know. Um, yeah, so with that said, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Other than that, again, call into the show if you could sometime basically to create a uh, audio submission. What you do is open up your free voice recording app on any smart device on the planet. Just open it, press record, talk into it like a phone call, and then uh, go from there, basically. Talk into it like a phone call. Mention you're calling in for Timberwolves Explosion and uh, do your statement, shout-out, comment, question, and mention where you're from, say, unless it's like an obvious, you know, like... Like somebody that's been on the show, a mil, uh, you know, a million times, like a Tene Brown or something. But if you're somebody new, like Jack from uh, Des Moines, Iowa, or something, I'm just making a name up. Yeah, just tell me, Jack from Des Moines, or 
Jason from Delta, who called in for Timber, uh, Purple Mafia many years ago and disappeared after two call-ins, unfortunately. So, um, but, um, yeah, other than that, thank you for listening. Tell your friends, and we'll talk to you very soon, I'm sure.